Hi and welcome to Bite Size Bat Rips, where we bring you great battle reports without taking up a great deal of your time. So we're back with by, by Fire and Sword, and I'm super excited to introduce you to armies. I actually had a play with one of the new skirmishes for Muscovites, the skirmish force of Alexander Potomkin. And uh, for myself, I still fielded my standard Swedish force because I just uh, didn't have a chance to put together anything new. But the Muscovites did show up with some new tricks up their sleeves, and um, it was it was quite the fun game. So let's get going. Uh, the other thing I'm just going to mention is that I actually played this game a while back, so there is a chance I'll forget some details. Hopefully, nothing too critical, but I guess just bear with me. Okay, scenario-wise, we're playing Delay the Enemy, uh, so the Muscovites are the ones that are doing the delaying. They set up the two hills, and as you can see, um, if you remember from the scenario, I'm just trying to get my forces off the table and occupy the two hills. So that's the scenario, and uh, we had, I think, one point force difference, uh, so I had one effect, which happened to be March losses, and I lost the gun, uh, which is a little bit, a little bit sad. Uh, for the forces themselves, so on the Muscovite side, the new skirmish force gives them quite a lot of flexibility because they were able to uh, have some Border Dragoons and Town Streltsy, which are super good at uh, defending the hill, so that, that was a very good choice to put them up here. Uh, they have some special rules that let them deploy additional fortifications, so these fortifications were partially bought with their reconnaissance points, which is uh, kind of a nice change. And then the other cool new unit for Moskowitz that they got are the Don Cossacks. So they have these two uh, units of basically light dragoons. So they're uh, light formation, open formation, and they can dismount and, and fight on foot. So the, the, these two units are really flexible and, and a great, great complement to the kind of stronger core that is formed by these armored ray tears. Alright, so that's the the Muscovites, and then for my Swedish division, uh, sorry, detachment, it's uh, a build that I actually I tweaked a little bit, but I like playing with the, with this build uh, because I just find it to be very fun because it's kind of like a mixed, uh, mixed uh, force type uh, scenario. So I have uh, Swedish ray terrors, none of them are veterans, but they're fairly numerous. I have some infantry, uh, dragoons, though that's my only veteran units. So I've got two sets of dragoons and two guns, which is really fun to field. Now some scenarios they're a little bit disadvantaged so this is one of the scenarios that can be more difficult because it's kind of hard to attack but uh, when they're defending this this uh, skirmish force is, is quite good. Now I'll also point out that I actually had one error in building the skirmish force and I think I'm supposed to yeah double check this I'm supposed to have two extra bases of these veteran dragoons for an extra point to be able to field the two guns which I did not do uh, but there you go. Alright, uh, quick close-up, uh, blurry apologies for the uh, the Muscovites and the defenders of the hill. And, and these fortifications actually ended up being crucial, so uh, the way they shield this really hard infantry on the hill uh, made this position uh, very difficult to, to kind of get through. And you can see some the Don Cossacks in the forest with their horse guards. So that unit uh, wisely re retains its flexibility. And my Swedes with their two guns, or one gun, <laughs> and one destroyed gun. Okay, so let's get started. Turn one, and uh, after the orders are given, I manage to recrew this gun, which is excellent because now I can at least keep firing with it. But of course, it's not quite as good as the uh, the the original crew so so I lost some firepower but fortunately not like fully half uh, so that that, that that was good to see and turn one the Muscovites go first and not much happens um, in terms of shooting obviously or attacking but uh, two important things happen so the Don Cossacks mount up so these guys are now flexible again and they can go anywhere they want which is great and then because you, you noticed uh, I put my Dragoons on the side because my plan was basically to run them off the board on this side and <coughs> try to kind of go around this defensive center. Uh, the Don Cossacks uh, basically responded by repositioning here. And because they're light formation or open formation, sorry, light cavalry, uh, they can do that very efficiently. So that's 
why the skirmish force is so much fun to play for the Muscovites is that they have these fairly big open order units that can boot around the board and be very flexible. For my part, I just advance uh, down the center and basically get ready for some sort of a confrontation in the middle here. And yeah, the, the Raytrace here form Caracol, so they'll be firing on my guys. But with their art purposes, but you know, it's not too worried about that. And the mounted Cossacks. Okay, in the shooting phase, so this is where the fortifications really come in uh, to play. So I have two guns firing at at uh, this infantry, both with uh, uh, with a case shot, and I just can't cause enough wounds to kill a base. So I killed two guys, sorry, or, or caused two wounds that they pass their panic test for for the uh, for the case shot, and they stick, and they'll be able to kind of get rid of those wounds in the future turn. So yeah, so that was unfortunately not as good as I would. And we go to turn two. So as you can see, I'm pushing my dragons here, and in their movement, they march their Cossacks up here, and now it's a problem because these guys have a very solid charge, and they're even though they're uh, dragoons, they actually fight pretty well on horse, and definitely much better than my veterans. So I'm kind of uh, basically stuck here. It's, it's, it'd be it'll be difficult for me to sneak through. Uh, so I have to come up with a slightly different plan, and <coughs> um, the, on, on the flip side, what I can see is that uh, the center is now weak, and I have pretty good punch, so I will try to kind of push through and maybe break through the middle. And I basically advance and open up my uh, formation, so I was too far to actually charge, but now I have a lot more bases that are avail available to fight, and he only has... Uh, couple of raters here and these light guys here so I'm not worried about that and then what I also do is I break off one of the Dragoon units and I move them this way because I want to split his, uh, my opponent's attention so so these guys are a little bit checked um, I can't really break through because I'm, I'm blocked here but if I can get my raters through then these Dragoons can kind of run through this way as well and so so I have basically two areas that I can advance on or at least that's the theory and as you can see also the the wound is gone now so these uh this infantry unit is back to full strength again so the the, the whole turn round one of shooting did nothing uh, so in order to increase the fire i basically open up my musketeers there as well and i'll start counter marching and advancing on the hill hopefully you know actually able to kill some bases Uh, close up on the Swedes, pushing through the field. And some shooting happens, and uh, not much. So again, uh, just, you know, with the minus ones to hit and the armor save from the fortification, uh, all I managed to do is cause one wound. And I think I did another wound in the second uh, round of shooting. So, but again, painfully close to actually three wounds, and so no bases and all panic tests are passed and so these guys are sticking on the hill okay turn three so this is when I decide to make my move because I'm running out of time uh, so I push my raters up this way into an attack I have four bases open versus two so this is a really good matchup for me and here I'm doing more of a risky charge where I know I won't be able to catch these uh, the slight cavalry with my raters because they can really draw but uh, I'm kind of hoping that maybe I can pass the skill test, and I, I just want to push them away and also make sure that they don't kind of come in here and um, attack my raters in the side. So, uh, so this is a, a gamble, but I'm not too worried about it because even if they, you know, fail the charge and get disorganized, that that's fine. It's not going to be a big problem. Uh, this is the the combat that has to go well because I need to break through, and if I do that, then the game's basically uh, in my hands. Meanwhile, the dragoons uh, advance. And here, what I want to do is essentially force my opponent's hand, so he has these guys here. Now, I know he doesn't have enough command to charge with them across uh, just the, the way the, the, the command points played out. Uh, so <clears throat> so I, I decided to kind of advance and and see what uh, what he can. Yeah, a bit of a close-up on this. Run for the hills. Or, I guess, run around the hill. 
And my opponent does something that's really clever, and I love this move, and uh, oh, I didn't see it coming, it was so obvious. So he moves his light cavalry up and fans them out, and because he has enough bases, he locks me in. Now the table edge, and it's not clear here, but the table edge is basically right here. I'm, I'm, I'm riding my dragoons right along the edge, so I literally cannot fit through here. There, there's not enough space. And there you go. No charge order, and these guys completely box me in. Um, I can't back out, and I can't go forward, and there's nothing I can do. On this side, on the right side, uh, we uh, this plays out as uh, as expected. So uh, yeah, the Cossacks here just move back, and my uh, raiders basically fail their skill test and, and withdraw, and, and and so they stick, stay in place. But here. Oh, here is where it really hurts. So, two things happen that um, that kind of uh, really uh, hurt me. So, one is uh, my opponent turned his uh, border dragoons on uh, to this side, and he delivered a flank shot into me, uh, as well as some defensive fire from here. And I knew I was setting myself up for for a flanking shot from the the hill, but I figured that uh, with border dragoons with their skill and I, you know. I'll, I'll be fine, I'll lose a couple of wounds, but it's not going to be bit too bad. However, combined with the Raytear Archibald's Fire, I do lose a base, and I I think I actually even boosted my command check, and I failed, and this got disorganized and withdrew, so this combat never even happened. And my charge up the middle got stalled on both ends, with both my Raytear units not making their targets. That was terrible for turn three. And then to make matters even worse, um, my Dragoons got bumped by these withdrawing raid tiers, and they also failed their morale, and they also withdraw. So that was a complete uh, misplacement of these guys. I, you know, I really tried to watch for that, uh, to not put my cavalry 10 centimeters behind other cavalry, but I somehow missed that. So that, uh, <laughs> that went poorly. But on the flip side, the Muscovites are now in a very good position because they've basically kind of blocked my charge. Now, they didn't actually do much damage, but they, they kind of stalled it and boxed me if off on the left side, and the game is basically in their hands now. They're, they have the initiative to do something. Just a close-up on the failed action here. All right, turn four. Uh, a couple of important things. So... One is at the end of turn three, I, have, I finally, finally, finally managed to kill a base. So I think in the firing after movement with my ga uh, cannon. Now they, they passed their morale test, but at least I'm now starting to whittle down this unit. So uh, they'll lose, hopefully soon, lose their morale uh, bonus for uh, for their numbers. And and I can get them off the hill. So that was really good. Um, I also rallied my uh, Raiders here my, so they can now do something. And I will obviously try to do something use, uh, useful with them. But I was not able to rally my Dragoon, so these guys, my second unit that's trying to get off the board is still stuck and standing still, which is terrible because now I'm starting to run out of time, it's turn 4, and uh, I, I just don't, I can't get them to move forward. Alright, so in uh, movement, we basically charge each other, so I have my you know, 4 bases versus his 3 um, in, in the front, and I've got my, you know, so it's 5 guys on, on 4. And I feel good about this uh, matchup just because I've got the numbers. I have the good tactical discipline, so hopefully it'll, it'll go my way. And then the other thing, thing that happens that's a bit more uh, risky on my side, but a good play on the Muscovite side, is uh, he charges with the Don Cossacks. Now, it's an awkward charge, so he actually, because of the hill, manages to only get one base in combat. Um, so there's a couple bases behind, and, and, and the commander uh, officer joins. And he's fighting two of my disorganized bases, so we're actually tied for a number of, um, of hits, and we're kind of tied on combat rest because it's three on three, so it will just come down to die, die rolls. And so because of that, I also put my commander into the unit because I just want to maximize uh, the chances of surviving this this engagement. Because if, if I lose here and he can get his Cossacks into the back, it's, uh, it's going to be potentially dicey for me as well. And I also go for broke here. So this is um, one of those like super uh, risky plays, but I, I, at this point I figure I have nothing to lose. So I dismount my Dragoons, which means that they, they no longer have forces, so they're slow. But I drop them into two ranks, and I want to fire a volley into... Uh, or a salvo into 
the, the John Cossacks because if I cause a wound, um, I'll force them to test and maybe they'll get disorganized, maybe they'll get pushed back and then I can start advancing and, and kind of walk off the map. Um, so it's, you know, just, just betting on this possibility happening. Uh, so two bases, salvo, maybe I'll get a wound in. All right, uh, the combat here. So first round goes well. I take two wounds, uh, but I end up killing a base. And so I basically win combat, I advance. And the Muscovite Ray Terrors test on a fairly big negative. I can't remember. I think it was like minus two or something like that. And they stick. They pass their test. So they withdraw in good order. And now it's three bases on, on four bases. Uh, no impetus anywhere. But they have armor. So that's bad news. Now here... On the on the right side, um, the combat actually goes terribly for me. I end up losing a base and causing, I think, only one wound. But I also get super lucky on the die roll pass and withdraw. Still disorganized, but at least withdraw, not flee. So that was a huge uh, coup for my guys. Uh, so I guess uh, <laughs> that's the the odds are working out in both our favors. So I have the Muscovite stick here and my Raider stick here. So no one wa no one wants to flee. I guess this is a really important battle for, for whatever reason. But in the second round of combat, again, it's matched. So here, my Ray Tears completely whiff all of their shots and take a lot of damage and end up losing a base and get beaten back. Now they pass the command, their, their leadership test, so they're, they're uh, in good order, but they got beat back and now it's three on three and these guys have armor. And so my plan of taking my five guys and breaking through the middle is now gone. I, I, I can't break through with these guys that easily anymore. And remember, there's these Border Dragoons on the hill still firing. Now they're terrible at firing, but they're still there doing their job. However, on the right side, I actually end up winning because of this combat. So this is where uh, the, the luck reversed and I ended up killing one base here of the from these Don Cossacks. I think I took one wound of losses and so I one, push them back. Now, these guys passed their morale test, but still, huge win that uh, these disorganized uh, raiders were able to actually stand their, stand their ground. Alright, turn five starts, and so to finish uh, the, story, the story on the left side, going back to these guys, they fired their salvo, and they didn't cause a single hit. It was uh, a <laughs> pretty horrendous shooting, so, so close range, uh, yeah, nothing, zero. So no, not, not even a morale test for these Don Cossack, Cossacks, so they're just laughing. Um, my guys took some wounds in, in the, the shooting, and so, yeah, so that, that plan is gone. These guys will not be getting going anywhere. Uh, in the center, um, yeah, these the, the guys on the hill are sitting on two wounds, so that's very good. So I have a chance of actually doing some damage. And what to do, what to do now? <coughs> so here's how it goes. This is actually... Uh, an interesting play. Uh, so, the armored raid here is weren't able to charge. Uh, there just wasn't enough orders, I think, for them to, to do this. But the Don Cossacks did charge, and because I was going second, um, I you know, obviously knew about that, so I, I was able to charge with my raiders this way. And so, finally, this combat is going to you know go my way, my way pretty much guaranteed. It's um, I have a massive advantage in this engagement. And these raiders are not able to support, so that's great. And of course, the reason, the main reason I wanted to do it this way is that uh, if I beat these guys and they flee, they'll, they will kind of the, the way the angles work out. They will flee through the hill and hopefully disorganize these uh, guys, on, uh, the, the defenders on the hill. So that was kind of a nice break for me, and I was very happy to to try try to apply that. And of also uh, at this point, uh, my good gun has no no ammo, so. I think I managed to recover one ammo for one extra shot, but but it's it's done. Uh, so I only have my kind of crummier skill for set four, no quick fire gun. And yeah, these guys didn't rally either, so they're, they're still stuck. And then on the left side, this is a cool play again by the Muscovite. So this is why I love these Don Cossacks, so flexible. Um, so my opponent moves them up here and dismounts them in a line, because now they can fire with their rifle barrels, and uh, there's still like five bases, so that's quite, quite a lot of shooting they can do. My poor... Uh, Dra uh, Dragoons will not make it. Uh, we did uh, t the, the careful measurements and just the way the table worked out. I think I was uh, off by like, I don't know, a couple centimeters where I, I, w I was not able to get off the board. So, yeah, I will not be breaking through. And, uh, yeah, 
here's a quick shot. So these guys are able to basically put all of their fire into wherever they want. And I only have two wounds here. Sorry, I have two wounds here, so one extra wound, and I'll be testing for morale. All right, this combat, um, so it's, uh, it's basically a flank attack, um, outnumber, not worried, and it goes exactly as it kind of should, so they get beaten back, and they flee because they're flanked, and they go through the, the infantry, which also lost their base in the defensive fire, so they're now down on their morale bonus, which is huge, and they break. This is finally, finally finding the massive break that I was uh, waiting for. So the hill is empty. There's a fleeing unit and another fleeing unit, and that's it. That is it. Uh, it's turn five, but there's nothing defending this uh, this hill, so I have a chance to score some scenario points. A quick look at the bigger picture. And turn six. So. Uh, I think I go first in, the, in this turn. No, or second? I can't remember. No, I, I, I think I go second. Uh, so my opponent decides to um, take his Raiders and charge, and he wants to basically do as much damage as he can, so he's just going through into the center. Um, these guys are now organized. I managed to rally them. And also, these guys, uh, the, the infantry rallied, so they just basically put themselves uh, in order, but they're far away from the hills, so I'm not worried about them. These Don Cossacks are fleeing, and so I throw some order, or, or orders on my guys, and this is what is. Uh, I put defense on both of the Raiders, because I want to be firing, um, a defensive fire, and then fight them. And so I maneuver back, and I touch, the, basically I'm touching the hill. Um, the Musketeers had a move order, so they moved up to the hill, and they can't get on it. And uh, this is when I make my you know, big kind of rules mistake, and so this is a lesson for the future. I thought that uh, the hill was controlled from basically 10 centimeters from the center and so I had some bases 10 centimeters in and I thought that this way I will you know, be in control of this hill but of course that's not how the, the scenario is written it's actually you have to be on the hill to, to contest it so so this hill is still firmly in Muscovite hands uh, you know, with the scenario rules and so, so I don't get it and uh, what I could have done is basically with my Swedes uh, do a second maneuver that would move me two centimeters up onto the hill, and then I would be contesting it. But um, yeah, so that, that that's a really good kind of a hard lesson for the future. Now on this side, um, my dragoons are marching. Now they won't make it, but this is more of just you know like playing the game. <laughs> so, so as you can see, they're painfully close, uh, so close, but they just aren't making it off the board. It hurts. It hurts. All right, so the rangers here come in charging. They take a um, whole bunch of fire from my, my pistols, and they I sm we smoke a base, and that breaks them, and they flee. So, good news for me, these guys are now fleeing, um, and but yeah, I'm still not touching them, not on the hill. And on the left side, this is really awesome, the Don Cossack, there's a rifle barrel, so this is like a, I don't know, like a 25 centimeter shot or something crazy, uh, but he, you know, has five dice, kills the base, and causes a morale test, and the, the single base fails it, and flees. So, in some way, they, I guess, got off the board, but, you know, fleeing, so that doesn't really count. So that, uh, that went kind of terribly. Alright, that's it. That's the game. So, outcome is a Muscovite tactical victory, 6-0, so it's almost uh, strategic because I lost all of the scenario points. I thought I had that hill, as I said, so that would have been a 2-0. So at the end of the day, um, I would have lost it anyway, um, so it just would have mattered how many kind of um, scenario points I, I would be able to get. But it was a super fun game. Really enjoyed And uh, so a couple of final thoughts. So for my game itself, um, so other than the hill, but that's just, you know, like a rule screw up, that, that's fine. That's something I need to keep in mind. The, the actual tactical mistake that I th uh, made is uh, here. So originally I set up these guys in two units because I specifically wanted the flexibility of having two units kind of running for the border. And when the Cossacks came up here and, and basically checked me, uh, I had, you know, I had, sorry, I had this unit here, this unit here, and the Cossacks were here. So 
What I should have done is use this unit to screen. I could have basically put them here and then this unit could run forward and then this cloud of the light infantry would not have been able to block both. That you know, just the, the the way the geometry works, it it wouldn't have been possible. So one of these units probably would have been able to make it around. Um, and what I instead was thinking is that I would do something like this, but you know, I was putting them through this much more risky path and uh, just didn't work out. So, so I think that's basically where I lost the game. This is a, I would say tactically, this is the, the one place that uh, really didn't work out as well as I wanted to. Now, the other thoughts I was going to uh, talk about is uh, the new skirmish force, armies. So the Muscovite force is really fun to play with and, and against. So if you're a Muscovite player, I highly recommend you try it out because the the, the kind of the flexibility of having light uh, dismountable infantry or dismountable cavalry, so these these Don Cossacks, is huge, and it really makes the Muscovites much more responsive and interesting to play because you still have these kind of anchoring units like the the, the kind of traditional crummy infantry, some really good infantry, uh, these you know armored raiders that can stick around, and then this flexibility, plus some extra special rules from uh, your, uh, the commander himself with uh, the extra. Uh, fortifications and defense orders is uh it's, it's a cool uh, cool sk skirmish force and it just makes it a lot more interesting so highly recommended all right hope you enjoy this see you next time